So, if you look at the anatomy, the reason why the hypothalamus is closely linked um, to the pituitary, um, biologically, the hypothalamus controls the pituitary secretion. We are going to see this. So, you do have the hypothalamus, as I've, I have said, and as you can see, it, it's, it's like a continuous structure. You know, the hypothalamus and the pituitary is just like a continuous structure. You can see the posterior um, pituitary is actually a continuation of the hypothalamus. So, this is strategically situated this way because the hypothalamus controls the pituitary secretion. So, on the anterior part of the pituitary, where you have the anterior pituitary hormone, actually you do have releasing hormones that are being produced by the hypothalamus, and these releasing hormones will stimulate the anterior pituitary cells to produce anterior pituitary hormones. But on the posterior side, as we said, you do have the um, hormones being synthesized in the hypothalamus, transported in the axoplasm, being released into the posterior pituitary so you you do have the nerve signals so you see these um both the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary are actually being controlled by the hypothalamus on the anterior side is because the hypothalamus produces releasing hormones that will stimulate the anterior pituitary to produce anterior pituitary hormones on the posterior side you actually have the hormones synthesized within the hypothalamus transported in the axoplasm and then they get released into the posterior pituitary so this should be quite clear so again just to make this clear you do have the hypothalamus through releasing or inhibiting hormones it acts um, um, on the anterior pituitary but of particular importance here is what is called the hypothalamo hypophysic protosystem this is a system of blood vessels that we are going to control uh, we are going to discuss that is very much involved in the control of the pituitary gland by the hypothalamus gland so you do have the releasing or inhibiting hormones being produced uh, from the hypothalamus through the HHPS, which is the uh, hypothalamo hypophysic um, portal system. You have stimulation of the anterior pituitary gland producing anterior pituitary hormones. So this is how the hypothalamus control the anterior part of the pituitary. So now let's get into the details of the hypothalamic hypophysio portal system. So again, we do have our structure, a hypothalamus continuation with the pituitary. But here we have a system of blood vessels. You know, we do have these arteries. And we have this structure or this part known as the median eminence. So this is where you have a tuft of capillary or you do have capillary plexus. Basically, uh, the vessels of the hypothalamus exchange the products within the blood with the vessels that gets into the anterior pituitary. And this is what we call the hypothalamic hypophysio portal vessels. So within this plexus, you actually have exchange of materials, exchange of hormones within the blood vessels from the hypothalamus into the blood vessels that gets into the anterior pituitary. So at the end of the day, you do have these sinuses within the anterior pituitary and these have the releasing hormones because you do have the releasing hormones being produced within the hypothalamus and then they're transported into these arteries and then you have the exchange here where you have the plexus of capillaries and they get into the hypothalamic hypophysio portal vessels and they get into the anterior pituitary where they stimulate the production of anterior pituitary hormones. So these are releasing hormones that are produced by the hypothalamus at the end of the day controlling the secretion of the anterior pituitary. So what are these releasing hormones? The releasing hormones that are produced by the hypothalamus, we, we are going to discuss them later. But how come that the hypothalamus controls the anterior pituitary? What is the reason? So one of the reasons is the fact that hypothalamus receives impulse from many biological stimuli. For example, if you do have pain, you have some of the impulses that are being taken to the hypothalamus. So then the hypothalamus will perceive pain. If you have depression or excitation, 
some of the impulses will be taken to the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus will perceive that. And then if you have olfactory stimuli, like if you have unpleasant smell, you know, bad odor, you know, this will actually, um, the impulses will also be taken to the uh, hypothalamus. Nutrients changes, you know, electrolyte changes, water imbalances, temperature, and all these are actually taken, or the impulses are taken into the hypothalamus. So what we say he here is, uh, the hypothalamus is actually a collecting center for information concerning internal well-being of the body. So then, if there is any change, something is being perceived within the hypothalamus, and through releasing hormones, and of course, through other systems that we'll discuss later, you have production of a hormone that can actually act to bring back the situation in a normal physiological state. So this is the reason why you have the hypothalamus controlling the anterior pituitary hormones, not only the anterior pituitary hormone, but also the posterior pituitary hormone, because the hypothalamus is a collecting center for information concerning the internal well-being of the body. So we have hypothalamic releasing as well as hypothalamic inhibitory hormones that control pituitary secretion, as I have mentioned before. But now we want to get into the details again, as we said, we do have the hypothalamus producing, releasing or inhibiting hormones via the HHPS, stimulate the anterior pituitary cells to produce anterior pituitary hormones. So what are these releasing hormones? One thyrotropin releasing hormone or sometimes it's known as thyrotropin releasing factor you can see the abbreviation trh uh, you should be able to dis uh, to distinguish from tsh with thyroid stimulating hormone that is produced by the anterior pituitary and then you have corticotropin releasing hormone crh which is stimulate the corticotrophs within the anterior pituitary to produce adenocorticotrophic hormone you have growth hormone releasing hormone which will stimulate um, the um, growth hormones uh, producing cells within the anterior pituitary to produce growth hormone. You have growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So you do have two types here. And the growth hormone inhibiting hormone will actually um, inhibit the somatotroph within the anterior pituitary so that growth hormone will not be produced. So the growth hormone inhibiting hormone is also known as somatostatin. And you do have gonadotropin releasing hormone that will stimulate the gonadotropes of the anterior pituitary to produce follicle-stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. You have prolactin inhibitory hormone. A point to note, when it comes to prolactin, we are talking about the inhibitory hormone because this is the one that has marked effect compared to the stimulatory um, hormone. So basically, what the hypothalamus does as far as prolactin is concerned is to inhibit the production of prolactin. And this explains the reason why if you separate the pituitary from the hypothalamus, all other hormones will not be released except for the prolactin. So if you separate the posterior, uh, if you separate the pituitary from the hypothalamus, all other hormones secreted by the anterior pituitary will not be released except for prolactin. The reason being the fact that the hormone that controls prolactin is actually inhibitory. So if you separate the pituitary from the hypothalamus, that means prolactin will be released. It will not be inhibited. Whereas for other hormones, usually um, the hormones that are produced are actually stimulatory. So if you, if you separate the pituitary from the hypothalamus, that means you will not be able to stimulate the production of the anterior pituitary hormones. That's, that's a big point and it's a good point to note. So now we know all the releasing hormones. We know that the releasing hormones are produced by the hypothalamus. They get into the anterior pituitary. They stimulate the anterior pituitary to produce anterior pituitary hormones. And now we know that there is a very close association between the hypothalamus and the pituitary in general. On the anterior side of the pituitary, we have the releasing hormone. On the posterior side of the pituitary, we do have the axon. We know that the hormones here are actually produced within the hypothalamus, and then they travel in the axon, and they get released into the posterior pituitary. So we see how close, how linked the hypothalamus is with the pituitary. And of course, we discussed about the hypothalamo-hypophysic um, portal system. 
system of blood vessels where you have exchange of these releasing hormones from the hypothalamus getting into the vessels that goes into the anterior pituitary and then the releasing hormone will be uh, released into the anterior pituitary and stimulate the cells within the anterior pituitary to produce anterior pituitary hormones.